Vanagon, rear brakes. You're going to start out with something that looks like this. Not very pretty. But make note of where everything is. This short side here, where the automatic brake adjuster, that typically doesn't adjust automatically. The direction that the springs hook onto the tabs, these go up in a little uphook fashion. And the position of all your other springs. Take note of the automatic adjusting star, and how this works. This little catch pulls up on that sprocket. Now these are the brake shoe retainers. And I use a vice grip to get them off by pushing onto the back and get in the vice grips just tight enough to grab it, but not crush it. You get a nice little bite on there. And then you're gonna give it a little uh you get about an eighth of a turn doing it this way. There is a special tool for doing this. I have never owned it. I've always used this exact pair of vice grips. You get it once, you'll turn it. It might not turn enough to fit into the little keyway, and then you'll do it again and it'll pop right off. Now you see that little groove there, that'll focus, and then the little recess that the retainer pin rests in. There's your little retaining pin. Keep this OEM one. The ones that come in the kit typically do not work properly. If you ever find some old ones, keep them. Same thing for the cap. Uh, the aftermarket ones just do not fit well. And then you go over and you do the other side. All right, once you got the other side off, pull that out of the little uh, retaining groove there on both sides. Springs will fight you a little bit. Get your adjusting rod out of the way. The little clip will have to come out of there. And pay attention to those notches and the offset on that adjusting rod so you don't get them in the wrong place later. Now to get the line off the wheel cylinder, going to need an 11 millimeter line wrench. Uh, work a lot better than an open end. Uh, won't flare out and round that nut off. It might be stuck on there. Then use a 13 millimeter to take off the mounting nut or bolt. And if you have a cap, Cover up that line so nothing gets in it. Now, it's time for a cleaning montage. Now that we've got that all cleaned up, take a second to add some grease to this outer bearing. There's two in this housing, but this outer one you can get to. It probably takes most of the weight of the vehicle and more of the heat from the brakes. If you're not going to take it apart and remove that seal and replace the bearings, I like to use a high temp Lucas grease that is also freeze proof and a needle insert and just go between each bearing and give about a pump of grease uh, don't overdo it but uh, it will definitely appreciate the fresh grease in there you might get some old grease trying to uh, be displaced and get out from putting in the new grease go ahead and scoop that out of there with a clean screwdriver
Now I'm putting in a paper towel to protect that inner seal and the bearings. We're about to uh, put on some high temp paint to protect this backing plate. Now when you're painting something with uh, lots of crevices and details like this, you, you have to go from multiple angles to make sure everything gets good and covered. Now that you got a good coat of uh, high temp paint on there, let's go back together with some new parts. Got your new bolt. Tighten up that mounting bolt with a 13 millimeter. Now we're going to mount up the rear shoe. Pay attention to the uh, position of that spring. They're color coded, but I can't guarantee that it'll be the exact color for each one for the kit that you might get. Hook that spring onto its mounting tab and I like to s typically start it inside of the uh, wheel cylinder first and then I use the leverage of the brake to pull it and put it into the bottom positioning groove. Be sure to hook up that uh, parking brake cable. Now move on to your front shoe Grab the proper spring, put it through the hole like so, and same thing, attach it to the mounting tab. Insert it into the top wheel cylinder slot, and then again use the leverage to put it into its bottom slot. There you go. This next spring, do this last. Now the bottom return spring, it might be a retention spring. I like to start with the back. You put it into the hole from the inside going out. And then, like I said before, I like to use these vice grips to get it in there show you how that's done. Get it just the right angle and it just pops right in. Like so. Now here's the adjusting rod. This short beveled edge goes towards the inside and that short leg goes on the outside and engages the parking brake lever. Now I got ahead of myself a little bit uh, with that bottom spring. You're gonna actually uh, have to take that off to get this in. Uh, we'll fast forward to that part. Now this is kind of a tricky part and you're working against those springs you installed earlier just make sure everything gets in the groove. You can kind of hand tighten it so it won't fall out. Try to center up your brakes as good as you can in the dust cover. Now that's the automatic uh, adjusting spring. It hooks in from the outside and it just threads through that hole and then engages the adjuster like that. 